Welcome biologists to this session where we're going to be looking at specification point D from 5.1.1 communication homeostasis from the OCR specification for A-level biology. In this particular video we need to know how endotherms and ectotherms beha behave and respond to changes within temperature. So endotherms, these are warm-blooded animals such as ourselves, we regulate our own internal temperature so this means for example if we go outside and it's cold our body will work to make sure that our body does not get as cold as the external environment whereas an ectotherm does not generate its own heat so an ectotherm is a cold-blooded animal such as for example a lizard or a snake or something like that uh, and in order for these guys to warm up they have to go and like sit in the sunshine in order to cool down they have to go and sit in the shade for example so that is why um, in warm countries you might see snakes in the middle of the roads um, and you might see, for example, lizards basking in the sunshine. Now, in an exam, it's not enough just to say, oh, they're just doing this to get warm. No, you need to make links here to, as to why. Now, the reason why we uh, lizards and us need to have a warm internal environment is enzyme activity it's all linked into metabolism and enzyme activity now as i've mentioned in a number of videos now whenever we're talking about metabolism we have to talk about aerobic respiration so the reason why a lizard would warm itself up is so that it can undergo aerobic respiration to produce atp which is needed for muscle contraction and other things like active transport and that's the main reason as to why a lizard or a snake would need to warm itself up so that's an exotherm, they're the cold-blooded animals. Endotherms, um, these we use, yes, we can use behavioural responses where we can move it to a warmer place or put more clothes on or something like that. But um, our internal body temperature can also be regulated by helping us to increase or decrease our, our body temperature by doing a number of things. And we, in this process, we use a part of our hypothalamus, which is part of our brain, you can see in that image there, called the thermoregulatory center. Now, within our thermoregulatory center, we have receptors called thermoreceptors, and these monitor the temperature of the blood, and they send messages to various parts of the body in order to either increase our body temperature or decrease our body temperature, depending upon what our body temperature is. Another term we need to get used to here is vasoconstriction and vasodilation. So as you can see here in vasodilation, um, I've got more blood flowing closer to the skin in the capillaries, which is resulting in more heat loss through radiation um, through the skin. And the reason for this is because this little vessel here called the shunt vessel, what this does is the shunt vessel narrows and it prevents the blood flowing away from the skin. And by doing so, it forces blood to flow closer to the skin and therefore resulting in more heat loss. Whereas in vasoconstriction, I get less blood flowing to the surface of the skin and more blood flowing through this shunt vessel. Another um, term we need to get used to here is the hair erector muscle. And what this does is it contracts and relax, relaxes to either uh, cause the ha hairs to stand on end or cause them to lie flat. So if the hairs are standing on end, this will trap uh, an insulating layer of air. So uh, this is how the body temperature is regulated in humans. So an increase would be detected by peripheral temperature receptors on our skin. Um, and an impulse will be sent to our thermoregulation center within our hypothalamus. And then through motor neurons, I can have two different impacts here. The neural impact would be to stop our, our muscles from shivering because by shivering and contracting, uh, that generates ATP and heat. We'd have vasodilation, where blood flows closer to the skin to release heat via radiation. We'd have relaxation of the hairs, so we don't get a, a layer of insulating air trapped. And we would um, start to sweat as well. The hormo hormonal impact, though, is that we get a decrease in the production of adrenaline and thyroxine because what these two hormones do is they cause an increase in metabolism. So in order to stay cool, what we would do is decrease the production of these two particular hormones. And by doing these physiological responses, we've reduced our body temperature. So it's similar on the opposite side as well in that the decrease in body temperature would be detected by these receptors. Uh, it involved my thermoregulatory centre, but it's slightly different response here, slightly different, but still using some of those terms that we've looked at just now. And that is all the physiological responses that